Airbus always intended the double-decker Super Jumbo A380 to be a flexible platform much like its smaller aircraft, the Airbus A320. However, that future would never come to pass and the only aircraft built would be the Airbus A380-800. What were the other types of A380s planned? And why were they never made? Let's find out. Back in the 90s, Airbus was looking for a new aircraft design for a market of hub-to-hub -hub travel. They saw that millions of passengers needed to fly between continents and that major hub airports like New York and Heathrow couldn't land more planes per day. So why not go bigger? The A380 was created to fill this market. Its original proposed configuration was 555 passengers in a three-class layout. Or, if the airline so choose, it could also carry 853 passengers in a single-class economy configuration. The design range for the Airbus A380 is 8,000 nautical miles, capable of flying from Hong Kong to New York or from Sydney to Istanbul non-stop. But this passenger A380 wasn't the only one that was pitched to airlines at the launch of this product. Airbus also pitched a cargo version of the plane. The Airbus A380 freighter would have had the most extensive internal space of any flying cargo aircraft, even more than the Boeing 747-8F and only outmatched by the single Antonov AN-225 Myria in service. The A380F would be capable of transporting a 150-ton maximum payload over 5,600 nautical miles. But there was a flaw with the A380F design. Because the aircraft had a higher empty weight than the Boeing 747 freighter, as in without cargo it was heavier on its own, it could not carry as much. Cargo operators would have run out of engine lifting power before they ran out of space on board. And that second level structure wasn't really designed for heavy materials, nor did cargo operators have any way to reach the upper level with current ground vehicles. Ultimately, delays to the A380 passenger program pushed back the A380 freighter and the 27 orders for the freighter with Emirates, FedEx, ILFC and UPS were cancelled. Airbus would not give up on the concept and would patent a combi version of the A380 in 2015. This version would offer the flexibility of carrying both passengers and cargo, along with being rapidly reconfigurable to expand or contract the cargo area and passenger area as needed for a given flight. There was also a proposed private version of the A380 that was in pre-production and would have been totally out of this world. It featured a spiral staircase wrapping around a glass lift to reach all three levels and that also went outside the plane went on the tarmac. It had a garage for two luxury cars, a Turkish bath lined with marble, 20 VIP suites, five master cabins with bathrooms attached and a concert hall. The plane would have been able to transport 50 VIP passengers to a range of 9,400 nautical miles. With a price tag of £3,000, it actually did have one order in 2007, but for unknown reasons, the plane was shifted to the commercial program and given a passenger fit out instead. The private A380 may have even been considered as an alternative for Air Force One which you can check out more history about in my Air Force One video here. With the A380, you might have noticed that the wing seems a little bigger than necessary. This is because the wing of the A380 was designed in mind for a future bigger version of the airframe, an Airbus A380-900. Compared to the Airbus A380-800, the Dash 900 would have had a seating capacity for 650 passengers in a standard three-class configuration, or approximately 900 passengers in an economy-only configuration. Airlines interested in this aircraft included Emirates, Virgin Atlantic, Cathay Pacific, Air France, KLM, and Lufthansa. There were also rumours that Airbus wanted to go bigger and was considering a project called the Airbus A380 Stretch, or now known as the A380-1000. 
And the Dash 1000 is an impressive number because that's just as how many passengers this aircraft would have carried in its full capacity in an all economy configuration. Such a huge aircraft would have had trouble finding a market, but likely would have flown London to New York and used for pilgrimage flights from Malaysia. When these orders were less than forthcoming and airlines started to raise questions about the operating cost of the A380, Airbus decided to present a new engine option of the A380 called the A380neo. Much like the A320neo and the A330neo, this plane would have had improvements across the board with new engines and better fuel efficiency. For an airline like Emirates, who operated an entire fleet of Airbus A380 aircraft, these upgrades would have been welcome and had a significant impact on its bottom line. In 2017, Airbus CEO Fabrice Brieger confirmed that Airbus would not launch an A380neo, stating, There is no business case to do that. This is absolutely clear. Lack of sales of the A380 and the belief that the market was going in a different direction, point to point, pushed airlines to other aircraft like the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. The last version of the A380 proposed by Airbus was the A380 Plus, presented to the world at the 2017 Paris Air Show. The A380 Plus would offer 13% lower costs per seat with a special split scimitar winglet and offer airlines an option of either 50 more seats or 200 more nautical miles. Its maintenance cycle would have been stretched to allow six more days of operation per year and improvements from the A350 program would have been brought in to reduce weight. Like with the Airbus A380neo, there was simply no more desire to buy more A380s and the entire program was eventually discontinued. At the end of the day, the A380 never truly realized its dream. Had it been released in the 80s or 90s, perhaps it would hold a place in our skies like the Boeing 747, but today the plane is being scrapped and even a second-hand market doesn't exist. With plans of what have, could have been with the A380 line only existing on paper. Which aircraft is your favorite in the list? Let me know down in the comments. And now a quick little message from me to you. I've been making these videos for a few months now and I have been totally overwhelmed by the positive support from you all. But I want to make better videos and keep pushing the quality of this channel. And that's why I've decided to create a Patreon for the channel. So basically Patreon's a platform where people can join and get several different perks as part of their support of the channel. And the perks that I'll be offering are suggestions and voting on the next topics for Found and Explained, exclusive live streams and tutorials on how I make my videos, access to the Found and Explained Discord server that I'll be soon creating, early videos when possible, completely ad-free, and I'll chuck that all in a link in the description and you wonderful people can go have a look in your own time. So thank you again so much for watching.